Good morning everyone and welcome to the show. Today we have Jeep Gladiator. So whether you have a JL Jeep Wrangler or one of these, the main problem, the one thing we hear all the time people complaining about is the lack of high frequency response. These things, well they, they sound very bland and there's a good reason for it. Let me show you why. If you haven't had the pleasure of checking out the interior of one of these new Jeeps, it's definitely an improvement of the previous model. They all come with video screens in the dash of various sizes, and they have eight speaker systems. There's a set of three and a half inch speakers up here in this factory grill, and a set of four inch speakers down here in the side. And I know what you're thinking, four inch? Why would they do four inch? I mean, they figured out a long time ago when they had the four by sixes that they needed to upgrade those to six and a half, which the JK thankfully has had for years and years and years. This model, they decided to switch it out to a four inch. Now it is a, a really nice four inch in the sense that it has a, a good deep mid base. There are companies that make adapters, Metra, for putting six and a halfs into the front. And there's a company that makes adapters to put six and a halfs in the rear, SSV Works. You do have to do some cutting on both and it is an extensive process. These take hours to do. These, they take some hours too. It's a lot of work. There's a much, simpler way to immediately get a better sound in your Jeep. And that is replacing these crappy three and a halfs up here. It's a dual cone three and a half. There's no tweeters in this thing at all. There's four mid range in here. Granted, these are kind of a mid base, but there's four mid range in here. Today, we're gonna take you through the process of doing what we call our basic upgrade on these. And that is gonna be replacing these four crappy three and a halfs with a much better three and a half. Let's get started. First thing we need to do is get these grills off in the front for that is a panel tool or a plastic pry tool. Gently pry up. These clips are very unforgiving, so just go slow. You have four clips, these four white things here that need to come up. Inside of here is two seven millimeter screws. There are Phillips heads on them. Pull up on the speaker, little push tab here, clip it. it does help if you have some form of a little flathead screwdriver. The speaker will come right out. Let's head over to the bench and take a look at these and what we're gonna replace them with. This is what we're dealing with. Standard magnet, has a little capacitor on it right here. Is an eight ohm speaker. We're gonna be replacing it with a four ohm speaker, which means these are immediately gonna be a little louder. Has foam around the back side of it so that it goes in there and doesn't vibrate. It is a plastic dash. The actual driver itself is rather small. It's like a two inch driver inside of this big mount here. So we're not getting a lot of sound out of this, which is ironic considering this is the speaker that's closest to us and is responsible for the most amount of sound. Make it the smallest one in the car, right? We will be replacing those with these, the Kenwood KFC X3Cs. These are the Exelons. Inside the box, you get a warranty card, which is quite extensive. Apparently it's in multiple languages. Instruction manual talks about the capacitor that these come with, the two screw options, the various mounts that are capable of it. These instructions are for both the X3Cs and the 2Cs. The main difference between a 2C and a 3C, the 2C is a two inch version that has no tweeter. The 3C, well you'll see in a second, does have a tweeter. It comes with the foam, that way we can emulate this. And this is the speaker here, it's a three and a half. The capacitor that it comes with is already clipped on. For this installation, you wanna remove these. Let's take a closer look at this speaker and compare it to this guy. As you can see immediately, the cone on this is much bigger. It's an edge to edge cone. Screw pattern, when you sit them on top of one another, they line up perfectly. The shape is the same. These will drop right into place. It's a four ohm driver. It's immediately gonna be louder than this one. And as you can see, it has this nice luscious tweeter right here that is gonna give you that high frequency response that you so desperately want in your car. Magnet wise is way bigger. This will work great coming off that factory radio and also down the road if you decide to upgrade to a aftermarket amplifier or anything like that, it will have the capability of handling that power with no issues. So it's a nice beefy 
see three and a half. It's very shallow and it's very flat across the top. This is what's unique about this particular speaker is it was designed to go into these locations where this grill is going to sit right there on top of it because they know that these speakers are the same way. So as you can see, this one takes up actually less room coming out of the top because of the lip that this has. There are plenty of three and a halfs on the market. These things like this shallow here on the front, this narrower basket is what makes these special compared to other three and a halfs. These were designed specifically to do what we're doing today. Others are just three and a halfs that are not. Kenwood still makes a regular three and a half in the line. This one is way better. Now, even though we've already taken this speaker out of the dash, there's a few steps we need to take in order to figure out what we're gonna be doing in here. The first step is polarity check. We wanna see what the factory speakers are doing as far as polarity. Because we're integrating back into the factory stereo, we wanna make sure that we don't change anything because we don't wanna affect the way these and the speakers in the top of the dash play compared to the speakers in the bottom of that. For that, we will be using the PT9A Plus playing a polarity test track. Starting with the bottom mid-range, we are getting a red polarity. Top mid-range is giving us a red polarity. So both the bottom and the top are playing in the same polarity. They're both red, it's fine. We just wanna keep going, check and see what the rest of them are doing. Red, 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 green, ooh. This one is red. Meter this one again, green. And there we have it. And that's why we do those polarity tests. So we know that all four of the speakers we're gonna be replacing need to be red, and that that passenger speaker over there that's connected is green. There's a lot of reasons why they may do that. Primarily it adds spaciousness to the vehicle. That's what they think. Could be a filter on there that is only in those frequencies that it's actually reversed. It's an all pass filter. It may have one on that particular speaker and where we're testing the polarity pop is giving us that, whereas the rest of the frequencies could be in polarity. That's a total possibility. That is one of the reasons you also want to still test the polarity at the speaker. The PT9 a Plus will do that for you. You can use the test leads coming out of this to actually see what's going on. Now the question is, why did I say not use the capacitor? This isn't the first one of these that we've done. And the way the amplifier is designed from the factory, the capacitor, well, capacitors store charge, as you know, and this will store charge. And what happens is, is every time you turn off the Jeep, you're gonna hear a pop. And then when you turn it back on, you hear another pop. If you leave the capacitors out, you won't have that problem. The fact that there was factory three and a halfs in there from the get-go means that we know we're okay. It's gonna play the same size as it is, just like if you take out six and a half, you put another six and a half back in, save it for another day. Let's head into the back and we'll show you how to get access to those. These beauty panels here use an Allen key. It is a machine thread screw, not a coarse screw, so don't lose these for one, and also be very careful putting them in and out. Make sure you thread them in properly. Now, unlike the front, these use a torque screw to get out, which is a T20. They're also a machine thread screw. Pull gently down, has the same clip as the front, push it in and remove the speaker. You also notice this here. This is a little piece of foam. This is designed to fill in the gap of the speaker. So it will probably fall out, but make sure you put it back in once you get the speaker in place. It's to make this cabinet here where the three and a half goes sealed up tight. This is the exact same speaker that is in the front. They're universal. You can swap them for each other just in case you're wondering. The first step we want to do to get these ready to go in the car is grab that foam that was in that little bag. It is two pieces of foam in one. Peel it off and we wanna go all the way around the speaker with it. Then repeat the process on the rest of them. And these are prepped for the car. Now what we need to do is find out what side of the factory speaker is positive and which one is negative. For that, we're gonna use a PT9A Plus again. We'll set it for output, make sure it's on. 
It's gonna make a ticking noise. We can either measure it from the back or the front. It doesn't matter. If you wanna measure it from the back, you want this to pop red. If you're gonna measure it from the front, we want it to pop green. We want this to pop green. Even though in the car they were popping red, that's the signal coming from the radio. That's perfectly fine. That's okay. But this still has a positive and a negative, and the radio is generating the movement of it. These have to be hooked up properly, and we have to know which one is positive and which one is negative. We're not gonna be hooking these up backwards. They're still gonna be correct in the wiring side. It's the radio signal output that is changing. We're getting a red. Now we're getting a green. Looking at the speaker, the side with the capacitor is the negative. The side without the capacitor is the positive. In the rear, that'll be the black wire is positive, the white wire is negative. Once you know one speaker's polarity, we said all these speakers are identical, we can take that and go to any one of the other speakers in the car and figure out which wire is positive and negative. So for example, the front speaker we already have out Comparing the two plugs to one another, the gray yellow here is negative and the gray purple here is going to be positive. We can add our negative positive ends onto our existing wiring and plug in our speaker. Most aftermarket speakers have a big positive and a small negative. This one is no different. We've added on a big positive and a small negative. We use full insulated terminals when we do this. Make sure you put your foam T back in before you screw the speaker in place, hand tighten in the screws for the first couple of twists. Make sure you don't cross thread it. Be cautious when screwing it in. Don't strip the heads. You don't have to go crazy on this. It's just metal and plastic. Put the bigger grill on, repeat the same process. Just hand tighten them in at first to make sure you don't cross thread them. Now, if your drill has a torque adjustment on it, make sure you have it on a low torque so that it doesn't put a lot of pressure on the screw once you screw it in. Or just do it by hand if you don't feel confident that you won't strip it out. And that's it for the rear. Let's head into the front and get that one put in. When snapping the grill back in place, line up all four first, put your hands on it, and push it down all at one piece, and that's it. With those two done, I'm gonna quickly put those two back in, and we'll take a listen and see how much better it sounds. Now, if you've had one of these Jeeps, you'll know like how bland they sound, and hopefully you'll be able to pick that up in the audio. It's YouTube, who knows, we'll see. Let's hop inside and take a listen. It really throws the sound up high into the dash and it right. carries, mm -hmm. yeah, good, good, bright, vivid, sharp. You can hear the cymbals. It sounds more lifelike, more natural, not just talking like this. Big improvement. So if you're looking to just bring your JL body style up to like, yeah, <laughs> but not go crazy, not go crazy. Just improve it overall. Simple solution. These guys right here will make that happen. We hope you guys have enjoyed this as always. Fernando, if you please. On to the next one, guys. You guys have a great night as always. We'll see you later next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.